they running their mouth. Then they looking for trouble. Ran right up in the knowledge. Now they back in the arm. Now they know we can fight. Come take give it every week. Me and your she mine. We gon' bring you the heat. Now they know that we hit. And they know we ain't quitting. Yo, she might the jig. Keep on bringing the gig. Unity, unity, unity. Cause they know we ain't stopping. And they know they got problems. And they ran out of options. Yeah, we know we got a problem. Can't let it go unsolved. Great, great sign of Afrocentric history. We seen them all. Uh, karma is karma. I see what I say. I hear the wall. Uh, Till I see y'all fall off, then I bring y'all up on all. I'm back up on my Clyde winners. Clyde winners, Clyde winners. Clyde winners, Clyde winners, Clyde winners. Clyde winners, Clyde winners, Clyde winners. Clyde winners, Clyde winners, Clyde winners. Divine winners, Clyde winners, Clyde winners. Clyde winners, I'm with you, Brian with you. Master teacher, create and Clyde winners. Give respect to the elders, Clyde winners. Hi, International Journal of Human Genetics, and PLOS Genetics, to name a few. He has published over 40 books, including Atlantis and Mexico, The Monde in the Ancient Americas, We Are Not Just Africans, and African Empires in Ancient America. For more of Dr. Clyde Winters, check out Yoshimad Gumroad page, and that will lead you to the master himself, Dr. Clyde Winters. What up, though? What up, though? What up, though? It is Thursday. How you doing, Joan? Dorville? It is Thursday. And on Thursday, you know what it's about? It's about me talking to you, family. It's about me coming to you and trying to express to you about the latest research in our history. And I'm able to do this. I have to make it perfectly clear. One of the reasons that I'm able to, to, to present to you this research every week is the fact that uh that I have a very, a very super Patreon. You know, Joan is a member of my Patreon. She's been a member for years. Joan has been very constructive in my life. What are you talking about, Dr. Winters? Well, what I'm talking about is that Joan has been very instructive in my life because, see, Joan allowed me to, to, 
re, re, you know, consider something I've been teaching for years. See, what I've been teaching for years is this whole idea, this whole idea that 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 we were, you know, a people that was in a sense, you know, could have caves. How you doing, uh, Denise Bryant? Caves is culturally acquired immune deficiency syndrome. This is what the original name of it was. But what Joan did is that she taught me, she taught me in the sense that that black people don't only lose their immunity to whiteness, they lose their identity. Yes, they lose their identity. So what I had to do is I had to re uh, I had to reconfigure this whole concept. And I had to say that Cades is not just culturally acquired immune deficiency syndrome, that Cades is really culturally acquired immune identity deficiency syndrome. So, you know, I, I really appreciate the fact that uh, she joined my uh, my Patreon. And after she joined my Patreon, she was able to share with me, you know, the knowledge and recognition in the sense that that we are a very creative people and that and that we should be a very uh, cognizant and respectful of who and what we are. I'm very excited this week because uh, I just had uh, my uh, latest book published and it's called, uh, you know, History and, uh, you know, History and Culture of Aboriginal Black Americans. This is a very important book to me because, see, I've read a lot of books over the years, you know. Everybody used to always say, Dr. Winters, have you read uh, When Rocks Cry Out by, by Horace Butler, you know? And people like that book because what Horace Butler did is that he claimed, in a sense, that, that you know, that, that Memphis was really Egypt and that, and that it was, and that, and that, you know, the Aboriginals were really some Egyptians and stuff like that. Bullshit. Bullshit. See, all these people, when they talk about when they talk about the black aboriginals, when they when they really try to explore this phenomena, what, what they do is that they go and they jump all over the world. They jump down to South America, they jump into Central America, then they go to Mexico. And then they apply this to the uh, black aboriginal people that lived in the United States, you see. But uh, this is unnecessary. It is very unnecessary to really be trying to look, how are you doing, Darlene X? It's unnecessary to really look for a great civilization for Aboriginal Black people in Mexico, in South America, you see. Because, see, we built our own pyramids. How are you doing, Darlene? And, uh, you know, but we, we, we built our own pyramids. We built our own uh, structures. We built castles over here. Yes, castles, pyramids. You know, how are you doing, Derek? But the point is, this is that, because of the fact that that they were destroyed by the uh, by the settlers, they were destroyed by the colonists. What happens in a sense is that we run all over the place. But see, in my new book, you know, history and our culture of, of the Black Aboriginal Americans. What I do in that book is that I really discuss all aspects of our history. I don't just you know because see all the other books that's written about the uh, Black Aboriginals, they don't really call the uh, the Black people. How you doing, Akil? They don't really call an uh, Shasan, what up, no? You know, and uh, and you know, you know. But the thing is, this is that. Uh, the thing is, this is that. It, it's just sad, you know, because the uh, point is, this is that. Uh, you know, who, who uh, you know, this brother, in a sense, he says, uh, "Not a kill." This other brother, uh, Shah, 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 Shah Sun says, Clyde. You're not related to those people in South America that build those things. Why are you saying we? I'm saying we because the fact is that you're full of shit. And the reason you're full of shit is because of the fact that you're some troll that wanted to get on my station and talk ish. And you, you know what? I think that I should just drop you because I don't like your attitude, you see? So I think I'll just ban you because, see, I'm banning you. Because the fact, in a sense, is that you're just a troublemaker, you see? Why are you a troublemaker? Because, see, you're one of those people, in a sense, that don't really love love Black people. I love Black people. I love all of our people, you see? I believe in being B1, you see? Our problem has been that we've been too nationalistic. What I mean by nationalistic, we're always talking about that we're, you know, that we're Hebrews, we're Muslims. Uh, I'm a... I'm a I'm a Choctaw, I'm Cherokee. Oh no, and I'm a I'm a Yoruba, and I'm a Hausa. And what the white man did is that he always used this whole idea of nationalism against us. You see, 
And see, people like that, brother, what they want to do is they want to promote this nationalism because, see, that's how white people controlled us. That's why white people talk about us, see. So what I did, I went and I wrote this book. I wrote this book, you know, and the reason I wrote this book is so that we would know the history of this book. This book, in a sense, is over 489 pages, 489 pages. This book deals with our history as an Aboriginal American. Yes, you see, I have Choctaw ancestry. I have African ancestry, too, and probably a little Black Irish because we went through an ethnogenesis here in America. And this ethnogenesis was a combination of all three of these groups because all three of us existed as chattel slaves, as chattel slaves on, the, on these numerous plantations that formerly existed in the United States. But although we existed as chattel, as chattel uh, slaves, you see, we weren't in a sense. We didn't lack agency. When the European came over here, he saw our great civilization. And because of the fact that these, uh, these Caucasians were ruled by black elites over in Europe. They decided that they were going to make sure that, that, that the Aboriginal blacks didn't, in a sense, control America. So they did everything they could to destroy our history. They destroyed our monuments. They destroyed, in a sense, our, our culture. But we helped them destroy each other. Yes, we helped the European destroy our civilization. We helped the European, in a sense, destroy knowledge about our history. And the way we help the European to destroy our knowledge about our history is that we would often help them to attack other black tribes. We would often help them in a sense to, to, to deny our ancestry. We would often, often help them to, to, to want to, in a sense, look down on us. But see, what I want to do today is, today I'm going to, how you doing, uh, Demetrius Shepard? Today, I'm going to discuss our technology. Yes, yes. I'm going to talk about the ancient technology of the FBA, Aboriginal Indians. Much of this information, a lot of this information you may be able to find in my book, my latest book, but a lot of it, in a sense, is, is, is recent. How you doing, uh, Create So, Create So Junior? You know, and, and, and it's, uh, it, it's very important in a sense, you know. I'm I'm so glad that this brother is uh, is sharing is sharing the little food. Yes, creates. Yes, creates. Hi, Dr. Winters. I'm having a cinnamon raisin bagel as I watch and absorb your great research. Thank you, thank you. I hope you enjoy it because I like bagels too sometimes. But I like to get a steak and bagel at that old place called uh, McDonald's, and I know it's killing me. But what 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 can I do? You know, it's very important in a sense that we that we understand this. You know. Uh, Darlene, Darlene X, wrote, she wrote, you know, why do we do that? Can't we see that he is the, the enemy and the last person we should, we should be helping? Yes, you would think that, but see, because the fact in a sense that, that we've been conditioned, we've been conditioned, you see, to ignore whatever other people do to us and, and just attack each other, you see? I mean, hell, the European couldn't have took over Africa. He couldn't have took over America without the help of Africans and Aboriginal blacks, you see. But again, I, I want to uh, get into this, uh, get into this uh, presentation, and I want to get into this presentation so that we can, uh, you know, really absorb what was happening. And I want you to really get a, a great understanding of our history and the technology. What was Aboriginal foundational Black American technology? Here on this page, you can see, uh, you know, several things. You can see some black people building a pyramid in the form of uh, the uh, the mounds at Cahokia. You can see the Cahokia mounds over there on the right-hand side, and then you can see some of our technicians. Yes, yes, yes. Black Aboriginals were engineers. Black Aboriginals were scientists. You know, they they make you they make you feel in the sense that 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 America was just a place with a bunch of red men walking around, uh, you know, walking from place to place, hunting buffalo. And uh, carrying their uh, their uh, teepees behind them and putting up their teepees and then going out hunting and gathering, that may have been the history of the red man, but that's not the history of the Aboriginal blacks. The Aboriginal blacks have a more distinguished history. You know, uh, go to my Patreon to see the slides. These slides are going to be in my Patreon, so so when you join my Patreon, you'll be able to get the slides. 
You'll be able to look at them anytime you wish. And you can uh, copy down information a little bit better from the slides than, uh, than, than you can, in a sense, from watching the uh, video. You know, so uh, again, go and join my Patreon, help support me. They're the ones who help me be able to do the research I do. Much of the uh, research, much of, much of the research that I'm doing is uh, behind a paywall. I have to pay for that. You know, my Patreon helps me to do that. When I when I make uh, certain uh, illustrations, many of these illustrations are uh, are made by uh, Chat GPT. Since I have to use uh, you know Chat GPT four, I have to pay for that too. I hope I have even more subscriptions because see the thing is this is that every Thursday I want to make a presentation that can be informative. I want to make a presentation that can make you think. I want to make a presentation in which you get the receipts, family. You get the receipts. And because you're getting the receipts, then you know that it's, you know, not only apropos, but it's a supreme de prim. It's a creme de creme, you see. Twitter at Dr. Clyde Winters 8. Follow me at TikTok.com at Clyde Winters 3. You know, uh, Quinn and uh, Yoshima, they make, they gave me a very, gr a very good presence on uh on a on TikTok, and I appreciate that because many young people are being aware of my research. Even though I've been doing research out here since I was in my twenties, and I've been on the internet since it <laughs> since it got started, you know. But again, in a sense, go to TikTok.com, Clyde Winters three, and uh, look at my shorts. Here you're on my uh, Afrocentric History uh, website. This is my YouTube page. Subscribe right now. Just you know, go ahead and press the subscribe button. That way you'll know when I'm about to do a new video and you can be, have access to it. Also, on this site, I have over 300 videos. Yes, over 300 videos, you know, that tell every aspect of uh, Black and African history around the world. You can order my books at Amazon.com. Buy a book. No, buy three. Just buy five books, but definitely get my latest book. History and Culture of the Black Aboriginals in America. This is my latest book. This book is very important to me, and, it, and it's very exciting because, see, I went for many years. You know, a lot of people was pushing me, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Winters, go ahead and, and talk about your, uh, you know, your, your Aboriginal heritage. You know, I, I mainly concentrated on, uh, concentrated on uh, my African, uh, my ancient African history. You know, I wrote about the Omics because I love the Omics, and I've, I've written extensively on the Omics. But but I didn't do anything on the history and cultures of Black Aboriginals in America. So I, I, I've been spending my time the last few years trying to write this book. This book is 489 pages. Yes, 489 pages. And what's interesting is this is that this is the uh, this is the uh, table of contents to kind of tell you what's inside the book. You know, in this book, I talk about the uh, who are the black skinned people of the Americas, the African background of the uh, Paleo American. That's chapter three. Chapter four ancient Africans began to spread around the world over 100,000 years ago. Yes, I talk about the spread of black people. They always tell you that uh, black people left Africa around 60,000 BC. That's wrong because we know that there were already black people in California 130,000 years ago. You'll find out more about this when you buy my book. Then we go into the uh, Paleo-Americans came from Africa, Malians in the Americas. Who were the, the mound builders in the United States? Is Native American R-Y chromosome of African origin? Melanesian settled South America. Foundational Black Aboriginals, the Native Americans. Thanksgiving origin of the Mafra. Aboriginal FBA technology, origin of the term white people. The FBI Aboriginal Native American Shuffle. And, and the Native American Shuffle, that's a very interesting chapter because I discussed the fact that many of our brothers and sisters, they go to these powwows every year and they're usually embarrassed. You know, I, you know, I've even read articles where uh, some black people that had got up to dance and then uh, the, uh, the, the Red Indians would go and pull them off the stage, even though they know that we're the original natives of this country, that we're the indigenous people of this country, and yet they will treat us like that because we didn't have a foundation. That's why I wrote this book. I wrote this book because, see, in this book, I let you know in a sense that we do have a history. I let you know our history, and, and more than that in a sense is that. All these other books that you find out where they talk about the uh, Black Indians, they don't really talk about the Black Aboriginals. Oh, they act as though the only, only Black people who became Indians 
you know, were slaves of the five civilized tribes. <laughs> and they don't even teach you that the original five civilized tribes were black, aboriginal blacks who formed those tribes. But they adopted the red man and through the conniving of the uh, European, the European has allowed the red man to steal so much of our identity, you see. And he does this because he doesn't want you to know because see, when you read my book, you're going to find out so much about our greatness. Some of it you're going to learn today. What is FBA? Well, I'm an FBA, but what is an FBA? FBA is not a group. FBA is not an organization. FBA is a lineage. A lineage is lineal descent from an ancestor, ancestry or pedigree. As a result, we are descendants of the African and Aboriginal Blacks who built the United States. Yes, yes, our ancestors. We could also add the Black Irish, but that will be a little too long. So I just use these two. But you better remember where we came from, you see. But we know in a sense that we've been held back. We know in a sense that we lost our, we lost our country. We lost our nations. We lost our, our history. We lost our land. Why? Because we refused to be B1. We wanted to be nationalistic. I'm a Yuchi. I'm a Cherokee. I'm a Cree. You know, everything except saying that we were B1. Whereas that European, when he got over here, what did he do? That European, he unified. Yeah, they had their little, their little squabbles. But when it came time to really take the land, the French, the British, the Dutch, and everybody else who was white, they stuck together and they took the land away from the uh, black aboriginals because the black aboriginals were not B1. They were not black first. You had to be B1. B1 is acknowledging your black African ancestry and mod, not heritage. We must be race men and women proud of our culture and African black ancestry. Yes, 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 know who you are. We have been taught a history of lies. Yes, yes. History's greatest lies have been taught to us by the white man, the Caucasian. He's taught to us these lies to make us feel that we're inferior to them. He's taught us these lies to make us feel that we have no agency. What is, ag what is agency? Agency is that you've had an impact on your history, an impact on your culture, that you're able, in a sense, to, 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 to carry out functions. just for your everyday living. But he makes you feel that you can't do anything. You have to wait for the European. As the role ruled under white supremacy, history is whatever white people say it is. Even though archeologists have found ancient artifacts of blacks, the white supremacists demand that you ignore what you can see with your own eyes and replace it with images they make up. Here we have the Mayan on, on the left-hand side, the Omec, on the right hand side, you can clearly say that they don't look alike. You can clearly see that that these Mayans and, and there were black Mayans. I'm going to talk about them in future uh, future lectures. You see, but you can definitely see there was no relationship phenotypically. That means how they look, their physical features between the Mayan and the Omex, and yet they want to make you believe, in a sense, that these people weren't black. These people weren't African. But I've already shown elsewhere that they were not only black, that they were African but they, they introduced pyramid building over here. They introduced writing, you see? And that came from our ancestors. How should we study black Aboriginal history? This is an important topic because all the books that you see written about the so-called black Indians, they always begin with slavery and they end with, they end with the uh, civil war. In other words, in a sense is that, you know, uh, black people brought over here in 1619 uh, from Africa, these uh, Africans were, ab were uh, indentured servants. Then later they became chattel slaves. And as they became chattel slaves on the plantations of white people, uh, the Red Indians decided, hey, we're going to make some of you black people chattel slaves also. And so that's how we got to be, in a sense, uh, part of Indian nations. That's all bullshit. Yes, it is bullshit. I, I, I hate to use a, you know, a, a profanity, you see, but it is BS. And the reason that is BS is because the fact, in a sense, is that it, it ignores the reality of our existence. So how should we study Black Aboriginal history? Well, the first thing we had to do is that to study the history of Black Aboriginals, we had to look at the journals and writings of Europeans during the colonial and settler periods. Very important, see? You're not going to find modern books that really discuss the Black Aboriginals because they don't want to admit that the Black Aboriginals existed. 
This is due to the fact that Europeans want to deny the history of black Aboriginal people because the settlers stole our land without paint giving us compensation. They also destroyed our, our pyramids, stone structures, and took away our writings. Thus, the Europeans teach the lie that the original Americans were Mongoloid Native Americans, tribes who came from Mexico, that lived in the western part of the United States and moved from place to place, carrying behind them their, pyramid, their uh, teepees. As a result, the journals written by colonial Europeans is the best place to find information on Aboriginal Blacks. Uh, three good sources include one, The History and Present State of Virginia in Four Parts by Beverly Robert. You know, uh, you know Robert Beverly, he lived uh, between 1673 and 1722. Then another good uh, source is Baron Lahontan's New Voyages to North America, edited by, by Reuben Gold, the Waits. You know, and then a very interesting book that's 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 written by a settler as opposed to a, a colonist is a book uh, by um, Timothy Jenkins. It's called The Ten Tribes of Israel. These uh, sources can be found online. Yes, yes, they can be found online. So if you want to refer to these uh, these uh, publications, you don't have to really buy these books from Amazon or any other place because of the fact in the sense that, that they're not copyrighted protected anymore. You can find these books online. And these books can help you gain insight into our history, insight into our culture. There are many Aboriginal Black tribes. Some of the Black Native American tribes were the Blackfeet, the Cree, Choctaw, Costanoan, Kashida, Lenape, Mandin, Manikan, Mandinka, Nanakoke, Narragansett, Nawawesi, Neantes, Aklonis, Potawanek, Piquat. Ramapo, Shinnecock, Seneca, Seminoles, Sekolan, Tamakra, Zayaha, Tuscarora, Wampanoag, Washita, Yamasi, Yamakra, and Yuchi. These are just a few of the uh, black tribes. And over here on the on the uh, left hand side, I uh, I reproduce a painting of a of a Mandine Indian chief. Mandine, Mandi again in a sense. We always have to refer back. I know a lot, a lot of brothers and sisters out there, uh, especially who belong to uh, Aboriginal groups and who've been able, in a sense, to re remain intact. They don't want to be recognized as being black, and they don't want to be recognized as being African. But that's all bull, because see, there's there's always been an inter interaction in the sense between you know the uh, uh, brothers in Africa and other and black people over here, especially Aboriginal tribes. Why do you think they brought all those uh, Moorish interpreters? And these Moorish interpreters were able to talk to the people over here. There had to be a connection. Stop, 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 stop being stupid. Stop believing uh, books like, like uh, when, when Rocks Cry Out by Horace Butler, who tried to tell you that, that, that ancient Egypt was down south and that the, that the Mississippi River is the Nile. No, we know where the Nile is. We know where Memphis was, you see. Stop it. Don't, don't allow people to, to hijack your, uh, your intelligence. We've heard much about the stone pyramids of Central America and Mexico. What many people don't know is that Aboriginal Blacks also built stone pyramids in North America. Here, Aboriginal craftsmen are designing stone pyramids and stone roads, capturing their connection to nature and indigenous traditions. Yes, yes, we had engineers. We had architects, you see. But 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 you've been told we just ran around and, and we just uh, lived in some teepees and 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 we were waiting for the European to show us how to construct all of these monumental uh, monumental uh, architectural you know uh, features or constructions. But we had our own scientists and engineers. Stop it! Stop it! Stop looking towards South America. Stop looking towards Mexico. We had our own pyramids here, but because of the fact that instead of doing the research, we've been waiting for the European to do the research. The Caucasians aren't going to tell you nothing. That's why I had to do the research. Timothy R. Jenkins in the 10 tribes of Israel mentions these stone pyramids in Virginia, North Carolina, and California. Jenkins noted that Robert Beverly, I mentioned, I mentioned to you, you know, a little bit earlier in this history of Virginia, first published in 1705, describes some curious construction by the tribes located there. He tells us that they erected 
pyramids and columns of stone, I quote, which they painted and decorated with wampum and paid them a sort of worship. They also constructed stone altars on which to offer sacrifices. The adoration of stones and masses of rocks, or rather of the, gen of the genius which was supposed to reside in them, prevailed also in Massachusetts and other Algonquin localities and easily led to erecting such piles. Algonquin, uh, let me explain to you, Algonquin was uh, one of the uh, confederacies that that the that the uh, black aboriginals had. Yes, you know, they always see to that they were later red. No, they weren't red men. They just, you know, beginning with Benjamin Franklin, they started stealing our history and trying to replace us with red Indians. Uh, but the thing is this, is that that's why I wrote this book. That's why you had to buy my book. You had to get my book, History and Culture of the Black Aboriginals, you see. But let's uh, continue. You see, much of the research that we that we learn about these ancient cities, a lot of it is not in the uh, not in the popular literature. And you had to admit why why would they want to put in the popular literature that black people <laughs> had any type of history? You know, they've been continually trying to teach you that black people are ignorant, black people in the sense of backward. You know, and so then why do you think they would want to uh, tell you about the uh, history of the Aboriginal black civilizations? As a result, much of what we know about the um, the earliest uh, Aboriginal civilizations come from newspaper reports. And these newspaper reports often re reported finds in the uh, 1800s that related to uh, various uh, cultural aspects of the uh, Black Aboriginals. Research indicates that Aboriginal foundational Black Americans were great engineers who built large stone monuments and pyramids, which were destroyed. We only know about these monuments via newspaper reports. Many can be found at Waking Up in, with Analog, the Archivist of Hidden History, Julian Rachel, 432. And uh, Karimio uh, Ahau, he's uh, done, he did a, a very good video on this. And so uh, check out some of his work if you want to find and see some of these newspaper articles. This image is depicting how Aboriginal men would have been building a stone pyramid inspired by the style of the Cahokia, Earth and Mounds. You know, it's very difficult in a sense because the fact is that we don't really have you know, representations of these uh, of these pyramids. But we know that their descriptions, yes, their descriptions allow us to see that many of the, these pyramids were shaped the same as the pyramids we find in Mexico. Yes, they were. You see, let's go back to Jenkins' book. And, you know, Jenkins, he also observed, and I'm going to uh, read this quote. He wrote, and I quote, Near San Diego, California, and within the day's march of the Pacific Ocean, at the head of the Gulf of California. Ancient ruins have been discovered, which will interest the antiquary as much, perhaps, as the discovery of gold has thousands of others. Portions of temples, dwellings, lofty stone pyramids, seven of these within a mile square. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? It was seven pyramids and massive granite rings of circular walls round venerable trees, Columns and blocks of hieroglyphs all speak of some ancient race of men, now forever gone, their history actually unknown to any of the existing families of mankind. In some points, these ruins resemble the recently discovered cities of Palenque, near the Atlantic or Mexican Gulf Coast. In others, the ruins of ancient Egypt. Again, in others, the monuments of Phoenicia. And yet in many features, they differ from all that have been referred to. It said the discoverers deemed them to be anti anti -diluvian. The region of the ruins is called by the Indians the Valley of Mystery. Yes, 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 temples, temples. You thought, you thought, <laughs> you thought I was joking. You thought in a sense that I was lying. You thought that I was teaching you something that couldn't be supported with receipts. Now you see, we have pyramids. You see, these people who wrote books like When Rocks Cry Out by Horace Butler, and they talk about, in a sense, these other groups. They talk about this place is Egypt. No, we had our own unique culture. We built our own pyramids. We built our own temples. The only thing is that many often, you know, the United States pyramids were destroyed by the white settlers. Yes, these pyramids often were used by settlers as quarries where they could obtain building material for their stone buildings and railroads. How do you think they built real railroads across the United States? They built these railroads across the United States by doing what? By tearing down our pyramids, taking the stone, 
taking the uh, dirt and then putting it, you know, building up these railroads. See, think about it. You didn't find a lot of train. You didn't find a lot of trees alone, in a sense. The uh, the plains as they built as they built those those railroads from the north to the south. See, where did they get the materials? They got the materials from tearing down our pyramids. That's how they got the materials. Let's go to Piketon, Ohio. Here's a mound group. Look at these mounds. Many of these mounds exist today. These are conical burial mounds, and they're typical of what late what we call in archaeology the Adena culture. Many of the Adena culture peer, uh, mounds go back 800 BC to AD 100. You know, I've talked to truck drivers, and truck and truck drivers have told me they've driven across these many United States, and what they found, they found many, many mounds, and around these mounds are fences. You see, why would they have fences? I'll tell you why. They don't want you to see what's in those mounds because if you can see what's in the mounds, you would know what they've done. Here's a good example. This is the uh, St. Louis Step Pyramid. As you can see, it was a step pyramid. You can see in a sense that 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 the top layer had already been a little bit destroyed. See, you know, you guys, when when I talk about the European destroying our pyramids, I know a lot of a lot of jokers, especially a lot of uh, trolls. They're going to say, "Oh, Doctor Winters is making up ish." You know, what is his evidence? You know, luckily we do have some evidence to show how they did this. You know, in St. Louis was once called the, Mo the uh, Mound City. This was formerly an, an, an Aboriginal burial and ceremony ceremonial grounds where he found many mounds. And these mounds were spread throughout the city. They were destroyed over a period of 71 years. This is a picture of uh, of Dale Chambers. She's in uh, a chata and uh you know, a Choctaw person, she moved from Mississippi to St. Louis. But as you can see, look at here. If you look at the uh, on the, on the left-hand side, you can see how the uh, how the Step Mirror Pyramid was. And then you look on the uh, right-hand side, you can see how it was later destroyed. But in even better pictures, I hear. We see that, that, that our ancestors, our Black Aboriginals, built a beautiful Step Pyramid. But over time, in a sense, these Europeans, they tore down that Step Pyramid. They took the dirt, they took the stones, and they began, look at that middle picture, they began to just eat it away, see? They took away this material, and when they took away the material, what they did is that they wanted to They wanted to be able to what? They wanted to be able, in a sense, to use those materials to build, to build St. Louis and other, other little towns around the area. And then you see in the final picture on the right-hand side, you can see where they had completely destroyed this, that pyramid. And you can see a wagon where they're going to cart away the rest, the remaining, uh, the remaining uh, materials from this step pyramid. See, I don't have to make up ish. I don't have to make up ish. See, we built pyramids. Stop, stop, stop buying these books where they're talking about Mexico. Get my book where you'll find out about our real, our real civilization, you know. You see, as you can see, white settlers use the pyramids as quarries where they could obtain building material for their buildings and railroads. Yes, yes. Their later buildings that they made, these buildings in a sense, you know, you, you people say, oh, where they got stone from? They got the stone from our pyramids. They tore down our pyramids to make their own houses. See, it is sad. It is very sad, you see. But if you want to find out more about this, you had to get my book, History and Culture of the Black Aboriginals in America. In this book, I tell you about our, our technology. I tell you about the houses, other things. And, and even more than that, this is only a little glimpse into it, you see. Uh, we're going to talk about FBA Aboriginal architecture. But uh, right now, uh, let's, uh, let's look at a, at a couple of commercials. And, uh, you know, I hope you'll kind of check out and buy these uh buy some of these uh, these books because these books can help you to get a, a greater understanding of uh, of our history.
a lot about where we came from, how we got here, and some of the important aspects of our of our culture and our civilization. So get this book. You know, uh, also here's an, another. Uh, so dreamy. Hey, I've just written a new book, History and Culture of the Black Aboriginals of America. Yes, yes, I've written a new book. This book is called History and Culture of Afro-Americans. It's about the Aboriginal Americans. It's about the first people who inhabited America. Many people don't know about our great culture, this super culture that we created, but I discussed this book. In 489 pages, you'll find out so much information, great information, about, in a sense, what uh, the Aboriginal foundational Black Americans did. You're going to see, in a sense, that Black people contributed much here. When the first Europeans got here, that's what they found. Yes, they found Black Aboriginals inhabiting the Americas. It was the Black Aboriginals that built this country. This is why you had to get my book, get my book, History and Culture of the Aboriginal Blacks of the, the Americas. In this book, you will find out the truth. You will know what we created. You will know who we are. Get this book. Buy it now. I hope that you will go ahead and buy this book. I hope in a sense that you'll understand is that this book, this book was made so that you will be able to understand who and what we are and where we come from, you see. Because, uh, because we have a, a, a great history, we have a, a great civilization. And my book is about this history. It's about this civilization. But uh, right now, let's uh, go and talk about FBA Aboriginal uh, architecture. The Aboriginal FBA were sedentary. As a result, they lived in permanent dwellings instead of TPs. Yes, yes. You know, late prehistoric villages from a diorama at the Ohio Historical Center. And this exhibit is following and called Following Ancient Footsteps. It kind of, in a sense, shows some of the uh, ancient buildings that our, that our Black Aboriginal ancestors built. Yes, we lived in stone structures. Or we built, or we built in a sense, our houses out of wood. You see, the Aboriginal FBA were a sedentary people. As a result, Aboriginal FBA did not live in teepees. They lived in wooden housing. Beverly wrote that, and I quote, in 1705, the manner the Indians have of building their houses is very slight and cheap. When they would erect a wigwam, which is the Indian word name for house, they stick saplings into the ground by one end and bend the other at the top, fastening them together by strings made of fibrous roots. The rim of trees or of the green wood of the white oak, which will rive into thongs. The smallest sort of these cabins are conical like a beehive, but the larger are built in an oblong form, and both are covered with the bark of trees, which will rive off into great flakes. Yes, yes, yes. See, they, they talked about our architecture. See? But you've been you've been taught in a sense that 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 people only lived in in, in you know in these so-called so-called teepees. That wasn't us, see? They what that wasn't us. Look at this picture. If you look on the side. If you look on the side, you can see that uh, they they made it look like it was thatch huts in, in in the Ohio exhibit. But when but the people who actually saw our towns, actually saw our cities, they, these cities in the sense was oblong. Some of them were round, you know. But let's continue. This is what Beverly also continued to write. I'm going to read it. Their windows are little holes left open for the passage of the light, which in bad weather they stopped with shutters of the same bark, opening the leeward windows. For air and light. Their chimney, as among the true born Irish, is a little hole in the top of the house to let out the smoke, having no sort of sort of funnel or anything within to, con to confine the smoke from ranging through the whole roof of the cabins. If the vents will not let it out fast enough, the fire is always made in the middle of the cabin. Their door is a pendant mat. When they are near home, but when they go abroad, they barricade. They barricaded with great logs of wood set against the mat, which are sufficient to keep out wild beasts. There's never more than one room in a house, except in some houses of houses of the state or, you know, religious centers. But again, look at this. This is what we did. See, we had our own architecture. We wasn't waiting for the European to tell us what to do. In fact, where do you think he got the forts from? He got it from us. You know, we had so many different types of houses. These are some of the uh, various uh, houses that uh, 
that, that some of the uh, the uh, Aboriginal blacks made. You can see, in a sense, the uh, blown houses on the left hand side. And these are blown houses were always surrounded by a, a fort or a palisade. You can also see this on the uh, left hand on the uh, right hand side. We see the various houses, but as you can see, the the Aboriginals built the black Aboriginals built beautiful homes uh, that they could live in. The houses were often built of wood or wattle and dough. They also made long houses and and chickies. The houses were usually built to form small towns. The Aboriginal FBA houses were surrounded by a wooden stockade, as illustrated in this picture. Again, we see the oblong houses and also the around houses. Du Bois, W.B. Du Bois, he commented on the FBA stockades when he noted that, and I quote, the mounds of the mound builders were probably replicas of Negro forts in Africa. That this tendency to build forts and stockades proceeded from the Antilles, whence the Arawak had come in the beginning of the 16th century. is proved by the presence of similar works in Cuba. These are found in the most abandoned and least explored part of the island, and there can be little doubt that they were locations of fugitive Negro and Indian stockades, precisely such as were in use in Africa. Yes, yes. So we, so we see that there was a continuity. We see that there was a continuity in, in how Aboriginal Blacks build their houses in North America, and also how Aboriginal Black people who lived in the Caribbean and in South America built their houses too, especially in, in relationship to these long houses, you see. And uh, that's one of the reasons I, why we know that when, when the Spanish were talking about the houses that were being built during the uh, colonial period, in the early colonial period, we'll find in a sense that the Aboriginal Black people usually built, uh, you know, long houses. But they didn't just build long houses, you know. The people who built the cliff dwellings of Massa Verde and the great houses of the Chaco Canyon, they were subsistence farmers of corn, beans, and squash, you know. But the interesting thing is that these cliff dwellings that we find in, 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 in Massa Verde and other parts of the, of the Four Corners region of the United States resemble the cliff dwellings from West Africa. These cliff dwellings are found in what we call the Dogon country. Yes, the Dogon country, see? Look at this continuity, you see? In the Southwest, we can find many of the same walls that we find in where? Mali. Look at this, and we see the Southwestern walls. Then we see how they made the walls in Mali. And then we can see in Timbuktu. So as you can see, it's this continuity. And see, it's this, it's this continuity in, in, terms, in terms of how Aboriginal Blacks continued, in a sense, to build various structures. Some of these structures may have been identical to, to many structures in West Africa, but that may result from the fact that in, in 1310 AD, Mansa Musa, I mean, Abu Bakari, he gave up his throne to a king called Mansa Musa. And anybody that knows anything about history knows that Mansa Musa was the richest man in the world, and he had so much gold that he brought down the price of gold when he, when he made the... Uh, the Hajj to a Mecca. But Abu Bakari, who was the king prior to Mansa Musa, he sailed from Mali across the Atlantic with 25,000 followers. 25,000 followers, yes! So you can imagine that given the fact that he came to the Americas with 25,000 followers, it can explain why we find some features, many features among the uh, Aboriginal Blacks that go back to ancient Mali. You see, it, this is a place called Montezuma Castle. It's an adobe structure dating to 1100 AD, but it could it could go all the way back to 1300 when we think about you know the uh, voyage of Abu Bakari. You see, and it's located in the Verde Valley of Central Arizona. The cliff dwelling is five stories high. Yes, it's five story high, and it contains 20 rooms. Think about this. You know, Aboriginal Black people were building. Five-story houses, five-story houses with 20 rooms. That meant, in a sense, that, that a large population could live in these, uh, these things. Again, you can find out more about this and other aspects of Aboriginal culture when you buy my book, History and Culture of the Black Aboriginals in America. Get this book so you can learn more. In addition to building dwellings made of wood and stone, the ancient FBA made roads. Yes, yes and stone walls to protect their cities. 
Karimio Ahu has published numerous old newspaper reports citing these uh, monuments. You see, here's an, uh, a place called Brandy Wall, and this is a wall that the uh, that the that the uh, settlers found. Farmers reported stone monuments and stone roads found on their property. For example, the Brandywine Wall of Mississippi, yes, it was four miles long. It was found near Brand Brandywine, Mississippi. It was made up of stones six foot long and three foot wide and two feet thick. It was reported that the wall was, was broad enough to accommodate two or three wagons side by side. Think about that. Our Aboriginal Black ancestors, they built roads. They built stone roads, and these roads built of stone that was, look how large they were, and they could contain, they could, you know, two wagons could go down these roads. Look at these wagons. That's what your people did. That's what my people did. That's what our people did before the European. Here's an image of the FBI Aboriginals building a stone road with giant slabs of stone, embodying a blend of traditional attire and monumental craftsmanship. Yes, yes, it took it took great craftsmanship for these Aboriginal Black people to build these roads. And see, this is how those roads would have looked as they went for miles and miles. And think about the fact that these roads that they built, they were wide enough for two wagons. See, you can only imagine this when I was growing up, uh, we used to see a lot of wagons, and I grew up in the city of Chicago. But we used to see a lot of wagons over the summer because people would drive these wagons, and they would be drawn by horses, and they would be selling watermelons in the in the neighborhood. So I can I, I can kind of, in a sense, remember how how wide these wagons were. But you can only, in a sense, look at that picture that I showed you earlier. But just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. The foundational Black American. Aboriginals built stone roads with, with giant stones, man. Learn your history. Know your culture. Get my book. Another wall was found in, in Claiborne City near the Mississippi River on the banks of the Bayou Pierce that was 20 feet wide, 175 feet in length, and 600 feet deep. Yes, yes. For some reason, they, they built their roads. They built their roads above ground or maybe in a sense the uh, the, the uh the earth has just settled around these areas where the roads were, you see, you know. Local farmers use, use these roads as a source of large stone. The walls covered 400 square miles. What? 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 The walls covered 400 square miles in an area where the Natchez Indians lived back in the day. Some researchers believe it was connected to the Brandywine Wall. Yes, yes. Yes, our ancestors, our Aboriginal ancestors, were building stone walls. Why do Why do you even want to? Why do we want to be be thinking about what was going on in Mexico? Why 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 do you want to be thinking about what was going on in Central America? We had our own monuments, and these monuments have been here, but nobody wanted to tell you about these monuments. They want to tell you about TPs. They want you to put your mind on 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 on, on Mexico, South America. But our Aboriginal, foundational American, Black American ancestors, they built stone roads. They built pyramids. But the Europeans was always still in the stones of themselves. We just have found a great wall at Rockwell, Texas. This wall included windows and doors. Look at this wall. This is a wall that they found down in Texas that our Aboriginal ancestors made. In a way, it almost resembles some of the castles that the uh, Blacks made over there in Ireland. You see, the Aboriginal men building a castle in Wisconsin, yes, they found castles in Wisconsin, you know. This would show how, in a sense, these, these Aboriginal Black people built these castles. You see, yes. We had pyramids. We had stone roads. We built walls around our cities. And we also built castles. I don't have to make it up. I don't have to make it up. But it takes research. It takes research. Thank you. Thank you, my Patreon supporters. You allow me to do this research. This should have been known for years. But they don't want to tell you what our Aboriginal ancestors did because they want you to, in a sense, think we were running around in teepees like the rest of those people. 
you know, they found cities, you know, with stone walls around them and a mound in the middle. They found these up in Winchester, Indiana. That's not the only place. They found other other monuments that that we that we've created. You see, the city was built between two rivers. The skeletons were between six and nine feet tall. They found skeletons there, of, 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 of people who were six to nine feet tall. This is official. These are official documents that tell you about our ancestors. Here's another wall that they found. You see. And this was a this is a stone fortification, you see? And this was also found in Indiana. Yes! Yes! This was a wall. It was probably a pyramid, but they tore it down. They stole the materials to build their own houses. Know your history. That's why I wrote this book. It's time that black aboriginals stop trying to find their history in Mexico. Stop trying to find their history in Brazil. Stop trying to find their history in Africa. We got our own history over here. These are not the only wall, walls found in Texas. Other great walls have been found in, in Bastrop, Codwell, Gonzalez, and Winston in the hill country to, towards Dallas and Collins counties in addition to the Rockwell County in Texas. Allegedly, 63 walls have been found in Texas, yes according to the Lubbock Avalanche Journal, April 7, 1776. This shows that ancient walled cities built by Ab the Aboriginal FBA were spread throughout Texas. I showed you how they had the walls in Indiana. Some research believe that ancient Rockwell site was formerly covered by a great flood. Yes, yes, this is it. It is so much. It is so much of our history. Stop it, stop it, stop it. See? But if you would have been waiting for the European to teach you this, you wouldn't have never got it. Because the European, the Caucasian, he don't want you to know about your history. He don't want you to know about the travels because he often it was a lot more it, the, 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 it was a lot more watery around and substance. And, and often, in a sense, the uh, black people they built their uh, they built their villages near water. So again, they built they made many boats. When in their travels they meet with any water which are not formidable, they make canoes of birch bark. This is a quote by by slipping it whole off the tree. In this manner, first they gashed the bark quite round the trees at the length they would have the canoe, and then slid down the length from end to end. When this is done, they with their tomahawks easily open the bark and strip it, hold off. Then they force it open with sticks in the middle, slope the underside of the ends, and sew them and sow them up, which helps to keep the belly open. And if the birch trees happen to be small, they sow the bark of two together. The seams they doweled with clay or mud and then pass over in these canoes by two, three, or more at a time, according as they are in bigness. By reason of the lightness of these boats, they can easily carry them over land if they foresee that they are like to meet with any more waters that may impede their march, or else they leave them at the water side, making no further account of them except it be to repass same waters in their return. Yes, yes. See? See? We build pyramids. We build wooden houses. We build forts around our houses. We build stone walls. We build stone roads. We build, in a sense, stone structures. We build canoes. Huh. Yes, see? But you go to these people, and you're looking for these people to tell you some far-off story. These people, in a sense, they all they want to say is, oh, we ain't African. What does that matter? The point is that we have a history. The point is that we have culture. That's why you do research. That's why I've done the research. I didn't want to, in a sense, just be talking about South America, Mexico, Brazil. I wanted you, family. I wanted you to know our authentic history as an Aboriginal foundational Black American. In addition, right at Rockwell, they are Tunk Creek petroglyphs. Yes, they had writing all over the place. You see, this is some of the writing that they found out in uh, in, in Tunk Creek in uh, Texas. They found other writings throughout the United States, you know, because we always had a literate culture. This is some Thenite writing. This was found at Rockwell. Yes, this is 30 feet below the surface, and they found this writing in 1949. 
You know, also in addition to writing, we also had a very super copper culture. The chief artifacts or products of the old copper culture was, of course, the metal copper. A vast number of copper tools suddenly appear in the archaeological record without any antecedents. That means that somehow they were just making copper tools. We know why, because they brought this. They brought this ability with them from wherever they came from, you see. You know. Ronald, Ronald J. Mason remarks, and I quote, incredible numbers of copper artifacts, tens of thousands in eastern Wisconsin alone, attest to a use of the metal that is at variance with the historical and ethnographic descriptions of Indian life in the Great Lakes. The amount of copper mined from the area is mind-boggling. An estimated, listen, an estimated 500,000 500, pounds of copper was mined by our black Aboriginal ancestors. Yes, yes, yes. You know, they had, they, they had, they found so many different types of of, of, of copper, copper artifacts, boche pendants. You know, they found in a sense uh, cre cremation sites. They found in a sense that they were they were mining copper in water. They they had wrist guards. The wrist guards were often what you wore in a sense whenever you were shooting bows and arrows. But in a sense is that the Europeans mining copper didn't just end. You see, there's a there was a people called the Manahawk and Manikan. The major Tuscarora tribe was called Manahawk. They lived in the northern Piedmont Mountains of Virginia, according to Professor Awen Smallwood, Smallwood. The colonist John Smith wrote, made a map which shows some of the uh, Indian tribes of Virginia. But there was another interesting tribe here. You, here you can see the map, you see. The Manahawks were, were related to the Manaco or Monacan Indians of Virginia. Monacan. They called themselves Manican. Where did that come from, Manikam? Yes, as you guessed it, it's a West African tribe called Manikam, which indicates that they were a Mandi-speaking people. The colonists said that the man that the Manikam were copper miners and who sold copper to the other tribes. So we see that that we find that that even though these mines date back into, you know, over thousands of years ago, that there were still people who were mining these things. You know, a lot nowadays, a lot of our Aboriginals, when they greet each other, they say Niji. And they think this is a Lenape word. No, it's not a Lenape word. Niji, Niji is the uh, is the greeting of the Mandingo people. And that and that this Niji was part of the Okanachi language, which was the language used by, it was a lingua franca, used by the uh, the Algonquin tribes, you see. And now we see that there was Mandy here. And, and one of the reasons that these Mandy men got here, why? They may go back thousands of years, but more than likely they may go back to that 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 voyage of Abu Bakari. There were many Mandy tribes throughout throughout, in a sense, the United States. In fact, they found a Mandy tribe right near where the cliff dwellings were. Know your history, know your research. Get my book; it has the it has the citations, so you can go find it. It's very important. Here's, here's my references. You can get these references. So you can go and you can find out more research and do more research about these important artifacts that we found. You can learn more about learn more about our Aboriginal history. Get my book, join my Patreon to get these slides so you can get the uh, information. History and Culture of the Black Aboriginal America by this book. I already told you about the chapters. You can go to Patreon to see the slides. All the slides that I presented uh, today, you're gonna be able to find them in my Patreon, you see. You can go to Twitter. You'll find me on Twitter at Dr. Clyde Winters 8 and follow me on TikTok.com at Clyde Winters 3 to view my shorts. Again, you're on my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you know, subscribe so you can get uh, notices whenever I'm doing work. You can order my books on Amazon.com. You can learn more about the ancient blacks in America by getting, uh, by getting uh, you know, the first Americans were Africans, expanded and revised. This book was done by... Uh, David Mhotep, may he rest in power. This is a very good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, get his book. You can also find out about these Blacks in Ancient America by buying my book, The Mandian Ancient America. And also my, uh, my, my, my book, African Empires in Ancient America, is a very important book to find because my African Empires in Ancient America, it shows you, you know, when uh, Renoko and, and, and uh, Ivan Van Sertima, a lot of times they talk about that there was, a, there was an influence what I show in African empires in ancient America that, that they weren't, in a sense, just an influence. 
that there were empires formed by these black people in South America, in Mexico, you see. Get this book, African Empires in Ancient America, and you can find out more. You know, uh, if you're really going to try to uh, get a good foundation about to understand the Aboriginal Black people in this country, you have to get my book, History and Culture of the, of the Black Aboriginals. Get my book, The Nationality and Law of Foundational Black Americans. The Nationality and Law of Foundational Black Americans, it'll tell you and it'll inform you about, in a sense, how, how Black people, in a sense, the, the Aboriginal Black people move from being called copper-colored Black racists to colored people, and then finally, in a sense, to our foundational Black Americans. We are not just Africans. The Black Native Americans, in this book, I talk about many of the uh, Aboriginal Black tribes, and I show the relationship between the uh, Aboriginal Blacks and the uh, Sub-Saharan uh, Sub Africans who were enslaved alongside them on the plantation. That book is We Are Not Just Africans. Uh, in my book, The History of Blacks in America from Prehistory to 1877, here I talk about our tripartite origin. And this tripartite origin, it, it explains how, how our ancestors were Black Europeans, Black Aboriginals, and uh, of course, uh, Sub-Saharan Africans. If you want to understand the genetics that, uh, that dictate you know, our, uh, our historical presence over here in the, the Americas, get my book, The Philo Geography of Afro-American and uh, Africans. In this, I, uh, dis I discuss all of our genetic, genetic influences. And then, most importantly, get my book called Pathfinder. Pathfinder is, is, is a memoir. And in this memoir, I explain how and why, you know, uh, I became a researcher and how at the age of 10, I knew that I was going to be the first. I knew that I was going to be an explorer, but I wasn't going to be an explorer of, of, of geographical areas. I wasn't going to be an explorer uh, uh, to study the stars. I was going to be an explorer to bring to you the first information, family. Yes, the first information on the history of Black people, no matter where we live at. And that's what I've spent my career doing for the past 46 years. Uh, you can check out History Gems, uh, Volume uh, 2. They have an article in here called The First Black Americans of Paleo-Americans. Get this uh, book, you see. This uh, goes back to when I used to do uh, do uh, presentations with uh, Reverend uh, Reverend uh, Dr. Matthews. Again, uh, get my book, Pathfinder. That's my memoir. And also, I get my book, Black History Gems. That they again talk about this ancient history that we have. You see, check these out. Very important to do so. And uh, you know, now uh, I want to share a few. Uh, I want to share a few uh, commercials with you. And uh, these commercials relate. These commercials they relate back to uh, some of the important research that's being done. Some of the important studies that are being done by Yoshi Mod. Yoshi Mod, Yoshi Mod is an, uh, is a, is a, a great and creative person. He's a very creative person, and because of his creativity, we learn a lot about stuff. How you doing, Mr. Sharp? When I already spoke, Arthur Martin, uh, Ryan Turner. What up, Dorvale? What up? Nice to see you guys. But let, let's uh, go and I want to share these uh, this information with you. And uh, so let me go. We'll share it. Okay. Check these out now. KB1 family. I'm excited to tell you about something super special and educational. This Black History Month, Yoshi Ma has created an amazing collection of PDFs all about incredible Black inventors and their amazing achievements. Do you know about Mae Jemison, the first FBA woman astronaut? Or Percy Julian, who made groundbreaking discoveries in chemistry? These are just a couple of the amazing people you'll learn about in these PDFs. These PDFs are perfect for teachers, homeschooling parents, or anyone who loves learning. They're filled with fun facts and inspiring stories that make learning about Black history exciting. Only $3 for a journey through history with some of the most influential Black inventors and scientists. Just click the link in the description to grab your copies from Yoshi Mod's Gumroad store. 
And don't forget to check out Yoshima's other amazing creations and music on Spotify. Let's learn, have fun, and celebrate Black history together. That is good. Try to uh, check out those uh, those uh, various products that have, that have been done. You know, uh, Yoshima, he did my introduction. He did the uh, the beautiful um, video that I showed you when I introduced uh, my uh, show. And uh, Yoshima, he can do a lot of things to make your your website or make uh, make your art more interesting. So um, I want you to look at this advertisement. Uh, check out Yoshima so he can make your presentations much more exciting, adventurous, and knowledgeable. At Yoshi Mod Productions, we're here to take your brand and creativity to new heights. From EPKs to AI commercials, animated music commercials to animated AI bios, book covers to picture flyers, and so much more, we've got you covered. Our team is dedicated to delivering high-quality, cutting-edge designs that leave a lasting impression. And for our valued clients, we offer exceptional creativity, a customer-centric approach, and work that reflects the latest trends and technologies. Just about making art, we're about creating experiences. Your brand, your vision, our artistry. Professionalism and reliability are the cornerstones of everything we do. We're more than a service, we're your creative partners. If you're ready to make your brand shine, look no further than Yoshimod Productions. Join us in the journey of creativity. Contact us today and let's make your vision a reality. Okay, I try to uh, check out those uh, products because... Uh, I'm telling you that that you will be happy, and Yoshimod will, will make everything beautiful. Okay, I'm going to uh, answer a few questions since we have time, you know. And uh, let's uh, check this out. Uh, Joan said, what are your thoughts on the uh, Great Serpent Mound? I think it's a beautiful mound. I think it, it shows, in a sense, the, the technological, the technological ability of our Aboriginal ancestors, you know. It's uh, it's the way they say it is set up is that it's set up in a, in a way that you can that you're able in a sense to study the stars, and that's what many of these mounds were all about. They were places to uh, to uh, to to study the stars. Here's another comment, and this is from um, you know, Nakti. And Nakti said, Doctor Winters, Doctor Winters is a modern day Renaissance man, black all star. Thank you for the uh, thank you for that support. But the thing is, this is that Nadi. The only reason I can do this is because of you. It's because of my family out there. It's because you guys, in a sense, you guys are out there. You guys are out there giving me the inspiration to do this. I couldn't do this without your help. I couldn't do this without the support. I couldn't do this in a sense without the support. You know that that uh, that 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 you guys give me. You know, and uh, Yoshimad is, is one of the uh, is a very important supporter. You know, Doravel says Yoshimad makes it pop. Makes it pop in. You're right. This this brother, you know, we do a show every Sunday night, and uh, and and we try to, in a sense, make sure that we inspire people. Gerard said, "That talented brother, Yoshi, 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 Yoshi Mod, you know." And again, uh, here we have another comment, and this is uh from uh you know Mr. Sharp. I love this stuff. Such an inspiration. Thank you. But the inspiration comes from you guys. Listen, listen, listen. If it wasn't for my Patreon and my Patreon, my Patreon, they support me so much, you know, see, they don't just, they don't just support me with, with, with the money that allows me to be able to, to buy, buy articles and buy new books. Yes. I, I might have to buy new books every week. I, that costs money, you see, but they make it possible for me to be able to do this, you know, and 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 that and it's so terrible, you know that 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 we have to fight to know the truth. That we have to fight to be able, in a sense, to really be able to share with you our history. You know, you know, just like Joan said, the Smithsonian Institute is hidden, stolen many of our ancient artifacts. That's right, and they and they got them there in the basement. See, but they're not going to let you in it. They're not going to let me in it because they don't want us to know. Imagine, see, imagine, imagine. 
Look how these brothers, these brothers who talked about the terrarians and, and these brothers who talked about that America is in the old world. You see, you see how they support Dane Calloway. Dane Calloway has over 400 subscribers. Carimio, he has over 100,000 subscribers, but they're always putting our civilization over there. You see, that's why they support them. They support Dane. You know, in, in fact, when you look at Dane Calloway's introductory video, he has he has some white people talking about, hey, Caucasian, I'm about, listen, listen to this man. This is a man who can teach you about your history. Yes, he can teach you about your history. He can teach you to be, in a sense, a traitor. He can teach you, in a sense, to, to, to just be a nationality. I'm going to be a Yuchi, so I'm going to be against the Cherokee. I'm going to be a Cherokee, so I'm going to be against, in a sense, the... Uh, the Yamasi. That's how that's how the white man controlled us. See, that's why he promote those people. But see, what did you see? What did you see? I did not bring up one time. I didn't show you one monument, did I? I didn't show you one monument from South America. I didn't show you one monument from Mexico. I showed you only part of, and this is only this is only the top of the surface but that's why i wrote my book that's why i wrote my book in a sense history and culture history and culture is that i wrote this book so that some of you youngins some of you youngins can take my research further some of you youngins in a sense will be able to really expand on my research and really and really let let black people know our history let black people know our culture i'm proud i'm proud to be a choctaw but I'm B1 first, black first. You got to, you got to do it. You got to do it. You know, and you're absolutely correct. I did a video and I hope you guys go back. On this uh, platform, I did a video, Dorvel. I heard the Sustonian has the has the nose of the Sphinx. I don't know about having the nose of the Sphinx, but the uh, but the uh, Smithsonian, it has a lot of information. It has a lot of information about, in a sense, the Egyptian artifacts that they found in, you know, in the, uh, you know, in, in 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 the valleys, but they found in a sense out in the Southwest, which they found they found in Nevada. They're hiding this stuff, you know. They don't want you to know about this stuff, you know. Carimio, you're absolutely correct. Naughty Carimio has some has some some cool info. But he too, he too influenced by the uh, by the Bible, so it 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 skunks his perspective. Not only that, but see, Carimio is not a researcher. I, you know, Carimio is not a researcher. So what he does, he reads a book and he takes everything literally. You know, that's why that's why, in a sense, I go through this process of always trying to 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 teach. I, I teach a research course. And I'm gonna I might I'm thinking about starting up a new one in March, and I teach people how to do research. How to analyze data, and they take this data and they and they make it, and they use that data to be able to understand what's going on. Yeah, um, I did. A, I have a show, and and in it, I uh, this show, do you have have skeletons of giants? That's what they say. But see, the whole point is this: is that we'll never know because they're not going to let us, Joan, into the uh, into the Grand Canyon. You know. You know, and. Uh, let us into the Grand Canyon. Let us into the, uh, let us down into the uh, Smithsonian Institution. I did a, a thing on the uh, Grand Canyon, and and they found, and they found in the sense that they wanted to say that 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 these Egyptians in the Grand Canyons, in the Grand Canyon, they couldn't have in a sense been real Egyptians because the fact is that their uh, their civilization showed a Buddhist influence. We we created Buddha, Buddhism, you know, we created Buddhism. In, in Africa, and that's why I got out. Uh, let's see. We have to uh, we have to study and learn more. Uh, Mr. Sharp, he says, if you're in your 20s, never stop going to school, guys, until you get licensed or as a PhD. I'm telling you it's worth it. I'm getting back to school now in my 30s. I think you should go to school and you should learn as much as you can. But I can tell you this is that you can't learn everything in school. Because the fact, in a sense, is that in school, when you go to school, you're supposed to follow a certain a certain tradition. You see, I'm a freak. Yes, I am a freak. Dr. Winters, why are you saying you're a freak? 
I'm a freak because I went to university and I came out still loving my people. You're supposed to go to university, stop in a sense really believing in your own people. Stop in a sense believing that that, that black people have any, 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 uh, any type of uh, agency, you see? You know, in, in fact, sometimes if you go, get too much school, they can make you dumb. My mother used to say that when I, but I used to think she was just jabbing and that she just wanted because she didn't go to college. She was just saying it. But I did find out later that sometimes you can't get dumb in school because you get dumber and dumber because then you begin, in a sense, to believe everything that your professors say. Everything you, your professors say is not is not really correct, you know. See, it's not really correct. You know, and then uh, here's an interesting thing. What about the black Cherokee? Were they, were they a part of the original FBA Indian tribes? Of course, the original Cherokees were black. What happened is that uh, that it used to be Buffalo. And, the, uh, and what happened is that the Red Indians, they followed the Buffalo all the way from the West to the uh, East Coast and to Virginia. Yes, Virginia used to have gigantic herds Gigantic herds of buffalo. You didn't know that, did you? That's because they killed them all, all off. And see, they adopt. We adopted these. Uh, we adopted these red, these redskins. And then we allowed, since we adopted them, then they were able, in a sense, to claim our name. But see, they aren't the original Cherokee. And and the data and to show you how corrupt the whole the whole group is today, the Cherokee are mainly known as being whites. You go out to uh, you go out to Oklahoma. The chief of the care of the uh, Cherokee tribe is a white man, but you know, uh, Carol, Carol, Carol Asburn, how you doing? Carol says the Smiths found relics in the Grand Canyon. The head of the Smith now is a black man, Lonnie Lonnie Brunch. Uh, interesting, you know. But again, I, I hope that you will check out my uh, video, my video on this website, and uh, when I did, when I discussed in a sense. The uh, relics that they found in the uh, in the Grand Canyon. Okay, Penrose seventy eight twenty five. How you doing? You know, and then uh, Demetrius Shepherd. What up, do? Um, Gerard said I found out and agree. Agree with the uh, wisdom. The best education. Is the education you give yourself true? True, but sometimes, in a sense, you need to supplement that with also knowledge, also knowledge from other sources. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of great sources out there. It's a lot of great men and women, but again, you have to be you have to be that type of person that uh, that 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 looks for a deeper meaning. You know, uh, DC. DC. Uh, you know, Precise says that, uh, Dr. Winters, your presentation always thoughtful and inspiring. I love and appreciate your, your master teaching. Everyone needs a professor like you, sir. Thank you. And uh, But the point is this, is that uh, I, found, I found that it's important to teach, you see, because when I used to teach, I taught at university, but I taught, I taught in uh, Chicago Public Schools for 46 years. I taught at uh, Governor State University for 10 and a half years. And then I taught it uh, at St. Xavier University in Chicago for three years. And what I've always recognized is that is that what make what makes what makes a good teacher is someone who's ready to answer questions. You know, I'm not going to tell a lie. When I was working on when I was in college, I knew in certain classes I better not ask any questions because if you if you ask questions, you might put that professor on the spot. And when when you put those uh, <coughs> those professors on on the spot, then therefore you can have problems. You see. And the reason that you can have these problems is because of the fact is that he might he might or she not might not be able to answer these uh answer these uh, uh some of the questions. Here's an interesting question. Dorvell said, are there any Jew Jewish Jewish tribes in America? <coughs> uh, of course there may have been Jewish tribes in America, but you have to understand this is that one of the things that makes it very difficult is that is that the uh, the so called the so called ancestral Jewish culture was an African culture. Where did the Jews come from? Remember, they came into Egypt, then they left Egypt. So that means, in the sense that they came into Egypt and they left Egypt, they were practicing an African culture. The only difference was is that 
is the only difference was that they believed in the, in one God. And 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 uh, mostly all the Egyptians believed in one God. It was just Ammon, but they chose the God Yahweh or Jehovah. And this was their God. So it's complicated, but I'm quite sure it was Jewish nationalities here. But again, it, it's very difficult because you have to look at the fact is that many of the uh, many of the various African cultures were the same as the uh, as the ancestral cultures of the Hebrews because they all came from the same cultural base, ancient Egypt. You know, Penrose, uh, this is a very interesting comment. And, you know, she says that uh, a lot of our people think that the so-called freedom were Indian slaves. Freemen, freedom were Indian slaves. I try telling them the truth, but they get angry when I tell them they aren't freemen. But the foundation of Black Americans, yes. They uh they want they want to uh do the uh, Freeman thing because the fact is this is that they uh the Freeman thing they feel is related to has a legal basis, but the point is this is that uh, and also in the dolls list in the dolls list you know many of uh, many of the uh, they labeled the uh, the, uh, the the Aboriginals in the dolls list as Freeman. See that was bullshit. They they did that so that they could take away their tribal names. They didn't want to they didn't want to put down their tribal names. So they put down, in a sense, the tribe that they belong to, but they put down their names. And see, many of these names like Crawford, Winters, Walker, they, these names came to the fact is that on the plantations, many black Irish and, uh, and other chattel slaves made it together. And that's how we got these uh, surnames. All of our surnames did not come from our masters, you know. Mr. Old Man said, let's see what he says. Mr. Old Man said, Dane Calloway plagiarized a lot of, a lot of his work. Jabari Osaji debunked his scholarship years ago. It's um, I'm not going to go there. The only thing I can say is that 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 I I can't. It's very hard for me to really really respect whatever Dane Calloway is teaching because of the fact that he says that uh that that uh Harriet Tubman and uh Nat Turner didn't really exist. I know they did exist, so I'm not going to uh, go along with that. Okay, uh, did you this? Our Nubian group that you taught about before, yes, those were those were the uh, Semitic speaking people. You see, and the thing is, this is that 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 they definitely called themselves Judas, but in a sense, I don't know if that tribe came over to the Americas. But I do know. See, it's it's all complicated. I can only this is it. As a researcher, Dorvell, and I love the I love the fact that you share a lot of a lot of beautiful research with me. Is that I can only go off what I can support. And so then I don't want to say something that I can't support with, in a sense, receipts. You see what I'm saying? Therefore, they may have been over here. And the reason that we know they were over here is that they found family. They found in Egypt these mummies. And when they, and when they in a sense, dissected these mummies, they found that these mummies, you know, had, had, had cocaine. We know that cocaine came from, from the Americas. Since there were Jewish, since there were Jewities, Jewities, in the uh, in the uh, in Nubia in the Nile Valley, at that time, then therefore, naturally, in a sense, there would have been people over here. They could have also been Jewish tribes. They may go back even prior to the expansion of the Hebrew people, because of the fact, in a sense, that we find those cocaine mummies. But I can't really prove this, and because I can't prove this, I don't want to send people out on a mission in which they're saying things they can't back up. That's why I only want to present stuff to you that you guys, if you get into debate with, with Caucasians or Europeans or even with other black people who don't, who don't have any uh, sense of identity and who are suffering from caves, you're able in a sense to present information to them that you can support. Okay, Darlene X, this is, a, this is very interesting. And uh, what Darlene X says is this. That's what did it for me too, Dr. Winters. I couldn't listen to Dane Calloway anymore after that remark. Yes, when he started talking about that Harriet Tubman didn't exist, one of our great heroes, and Nat Turner. And you know, Nat Turner was an uh, Aboriginal. Yes, he was an Aboriginal. And if you notice, Nat Turner was an Aboriginal. And that you had to understand that before, before 1830, all the vast majority of, of Black people on the plantations except for the free blacks, most of the uh, black people on the plantations, they believed in one God, you see, 
and they didn't really talk so much about Jesus. After 1830, you know, a lot of the uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, the, the uh, services that black people would have religious services had to be had to be in a sense include Europeans, and that's when they wanted to move us away from believing believing in in one God into uh, believing in Jesus Christ, you know, as our Savior, you know. Okay, Joan. Uh, Joan said. Joan said, Darlene next, same with me. I was done with him after that. You know, the point is this, is that, is that, you know, nobody can take away the, the fact is that, is that Dane Calloway has an excellent book on how to, on how to trace your, your, uh, your ancestry. So again, some people can have, have different, can have different gifts. And then, and then they may in a sense find it difficult to be really a, given a perspective because see, you have to understand is that, Sometimes we can be used by Europeans. Sometimes, in a sense, we can think that we're doing the right thing, and it may appear on the surface as the right thing. But sometimes a European can be having us do his dirty work for him, and we don't even understand it. See? And so the European, he is very happy to have, in a sense, Dane Calloway and Carimio talk about this is this is uh, really, in a sense, uh, 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 ancient Egypt, that, that uh, this is the old world. They even have people going to talk about Pangaea. Pangaea separated over 200 million years ago. And, and in fact, and in fact, it had it had dinosaurs on it. But it was a it was they they claimed that some meteor struck the earth and that killed all the dinosaurs. And even so, if it would have been some humans on with them, they would have been all killed off too. But no, Pangaea is over 200 million years old. It has nothing to do with us, see. We couldn't have come from Asia because the ice blocked us. The only place that, uh, that 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 people who live in America could have came from during the ice age was from Africa. Africa, Africa is less than 1,500 miles away. Less than 105, 100, 1,500 miles away. That's less than drive. That's less than driving from California to uh, New York City, or from driving from California. To uh to Chicago, see. But they but we learn these things and people teach us those things when we don't do our research. That's why I wrote this book. That's why I wrote this book, the culture and history of Aboriginal Black Americans. I wrote this book so that you will know our history, so that so that you don't no longer have to go running around saying, "Hey, you know, we built pyramids in Mexico." Hey. You know our ancestors are the Omex. Hey, no, you don't have to go doing that ish anymore. I put in here our real history. I put in here that the fact that we do have technology, that we did build pyramids here. The only thing is, is that the European, you know, he destroyed them all. The only, only thing, the only thing saved uh, the pyramids down in Mexico is that they was under, they was under those thick forests or under those mounds. But see, that European has made sure that he's going to make make sure that you never, 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 never. I'm going to sound like I'm going to sound like uh, Claude Anderson. Never, 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 never know your history. I love Claude Anderson. Again, how you doing, Dion Epps? What up, dude? Okay, so uh, we've been here a while, and uh, again, in a sense, is that. Uh, Here's an interesting comment. Pimrose said, Ancestry and 21 and Me DNA companies should be ashamed of themselves. Dana, Dane, and Lewis Gates are symbols. Yes, they are. But see, the, the thing is this is that they are, that's why you need to get my book um, on the on the uh phylogeography of uh black people, you know. And that and that what I do in this is that I tell you the real Make you understand that a lot of the so-called genes that they tell you that aren't 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 examples of black people are really black genes, but they they've given them they've given them different names, you know. Dorvell said most people are lazy and uh, have poor uh, comprehension skills. That's true. But again, in the sense, remember uh, Lewis Gates. Lewis Gates is neither a historian, anthropologist. He's a literature specialist. He's a literature specialist. He's not a historian. He's not an anthropologist. He's not a linguist, you see. But they put him forward because 
he's he's going to be just a regurgitator. What's a regurgitator? He's just going to spread whatever the Europeans ask him to spread, you see. Joan, uh, again, uh, Joan says, uh, thanks again, Doc. Be safe out here, family. B1. Yes, yes, thank you. I'm going to try to be safe. I'm trying to try to stay out of trouble. It's hard sometimes, but you can always try. Huh. I didn't know. I, I didn't I don't know if this is true or not, but it's something to keep in mind. I'll look it up. I didn't know. I don't I didn't know. I don't know if this is true. This is uh, by, uh, you know, uh, Black Mind. He said, did you know the Dafuski Island? There's a book in the museum called Nigger, Only New Testament Written in Geechee Language. I can believe it, you know, because uh, it sounds interesting. And it sounds like something that a, that a European would have did. You know, many of the missionaries wanted to translate things in languages. I don't know about it, but it's something that uh, people should uh, can maybe uh, check out, Black Mind. It's inter that's interesting, you know. Okay, so I uh, we've been it's been over about an uh, an hour and a half. Yes, we have a few more minutes. So if there's a few more questions, put them in, and I'll try to answer them. If not, we'll just uh, call it a, call it a night. But I don't see any more uh, any more uh, you know uh, questions in the chat. So you guys have a nice evening. Thank you for coming up, family. Put a like, press that like button, and subscribe. And remember, in a sense, is that we do not need, we do not need to look to Mexico, Egypt, Central America, South America. We have a great culture here, and that's why I gave you this presentation today on the Aboriginal Foundation of Black American Technology and Civilization. Please uh, tell your friends about it. Please, in a sense, uh, please uh, make sure that uh, you, you uh, subscribe to the site, press that like button, and tell your friends to check it out. In other words, have a good evening, everybody. Good night.